Oh. That looks really cool. Yeah, it looks like a smartwatch. The wireless wrist pager can configure multiple call keys. I'm not quite sure what everything does. There you go. Figured that one out. It was funny, it came off the first time, no problem. Initializing. I mean, honestly, the watch itself looks like it's worth $70. The lanyard is not adjustable. I think it falls at a good length, but I'm a short person, so right about at the belly button. But when we opened up, it was a 12 volt, 23 amp battery. I'll make sure we have one of these ready to go for replacement. Yep. We're testing out the range on this. Aaron is at the end of the driveway. Babe, go ahead and hit it. Okay, and there it is. So now we know we can pick up mail and yep. have the watch on and it'll still work. Mom is having issues with numbness in her fingertips after chemotherapy. I don't know that it's that easy to take off if you're the person who's wearing this, but the good news is it won't fall off. I mean, the chances of that being knocked loose. Yeah, is... if that gets knocked loose, most likely somebody else is coming with it. Yeah, this kit came with one of these and then we have the emergency call button that is gonna go in the bathroom. Here's the other one right here. Yeah. Wow. Oh, so call one means this particular one is the one she tripped. So you didn't have to program nope, that? Nope, they already had both of them programmed all the way in. So wow. this is good. Now, okay. you can rename these as well, but we're not going to go through that work. It's not necessary. Yeah. If I don't have either of these, how do I make the watch? Tell me what time it is. Click the, the, the button. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there are four buttons on here. So there's the top one that I don't know what that is. It looks like a screw, the setting. Mm -hmm. it's a oh, setting. that's on off. Okay. And then you've got the arrow up and arrow down. Right. And then you've got the back. Right. Not, not. Oh, so there you go. So I would hit the back button. Essentially there is, you know, your, your simple operation, which is like things saying turn on. And then there's add and delete buttons. So apparently you can add other functions or add other things to it. Oh. And then renaming those and key defines and whatever else and there's an alarm clock. This doesn't look s simple and you would have to play with it to kind of get an idea of what it actually does. We don't have uh, a reason to rename them as specific no, tasks. No. Like if we were going to hand this out to a nurse, we would probably rename this. We have this lovely 3M double coated tissue tape. Um, one that's the size of the bathroom device and then one that's the size of the lanyard. I'm super excited to give this to mom. She really wants a no fuss way to make sure that she's okay. She hasn't fallen recently, but really that's our number one problem. She falls and then can't get help. Uh, which I guess is the whole reason people get like life alert type systems. Um, and since we're upstairs in the house, there's really no need for her to not have help. We're here. Notice the green thing blinks. Yeah. That shows you that there's an active alert that's still in the queue. Even if you took this off, went to take a shower, got back out and looked, you would see that there is a green blinking uh, light. Okay. Therefore telling you, get drier faster. And then of course you hit it twice and it goes away. There's a concept of long press and then short press. That's already described in here. Okay. Uh, short press is one second, long press is three. So you, then you go over to date time and it says in standby, long press this key, it was the top one, the enter settings menu. So in other words, I held it down until this popped up. And then, I mean, these are arrow keys and you just keep clicking it until it goes down to date and time. Okay. This top button again will be your select key. So you click that and there you go. And then you're like, oh, well that's, that's good enough. So you just hit this enter key again. Okay. Enter again. Oh, that's where the arrow up and down keys yep. help. And okay. use the down keys again. So okay. I hit, hit back and back again and I'm back to normal. Whenever mom is away from the house, I take the opportunity to charge my watch. I use the cord that came with the watch and I plug it into my laptop. So this kind of becomes my charging station. Yeah, this is kind of dumb. I almost want to, yeah, you don't want to pull that cord. Clever. What do we do on the other side? I think we're trying to pop that off. Okay. Let me try it. I love you. This is weird. We attached the foam to it, which might have actually covered the directions. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is annoying, isn't it? I just don't want to break it. Maybe I'll take it up and have Aaron 
see if you can figure it out. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, honey. I've been having issues with the band of this watch. I keep super glue around for moments like this. came off of the watch band yesterday and so now I am using a clear hair band. It's actually working pretty well. We've had issues with charging the watch recently. It'll look like it's charging. However, it's not actually holding a charge and I did this overnight and it still didn't work. I kept the box that this caregiver pager came in. Under the troubleshooting area, it does talk about what happens when the power is too low, but it does not talk about changing out the battery in the watch. This emergency button, we never actually went back to try to put new batteries in. It probably got stuck on or something and just ran itself dry. I think that the design, the way it is, is very hard to get to and very hard to replace these batteries. And I'm assuming that this is probably the same. I don't know why this one died. It could be the battery is no longer charging. It also could mean that the actual electronics are done. They're destroyed. Oh, yeah. Because the charging part of this still looks like it's working, but I, it doesn't actually look like it's filling. We use this a lot, but we also charged it a lot. And if it's one of those things that doesn't have a um, some kind of protecting against overcharging or whatever, then there's a very good chance we could have killed it too, just by charging it too much. Of course, it's scratched up and everything, but ultimately, the face stayed fine. It feels like it's plastic, but it, it held up at least. Yeah, it's just dead, not even trying to kick on. And I, that either means the, the, the battery is totally dead and not working anymore, or the electronics are fried. My mom is terminally ill, so we're trying to find a way to help her that makes her comfortable. But frankly, she wasn't really comfortable wearing the lanyard. She prefers having her cell phone in her pocket, and we have programmed her cell phone so that it will emergency dial if she just hits a certain button. I don't plan on replacing this. It was a nice try, but it just didn't quite live up to what I would want it to be. It's a little bit of a hassle trying to wear this every single day and remember to keep it charged. And most of the time, mom wasn't even wearing her lanyard yeah. anyway. We wear it all the time, so that's something I wear during the night. We're not putting it through like uh, an obstacle course. It's not like that. It's literally just breaking off in normal use. It was way less expensive than other options. Right. So if you are willing to put up with the fact that it has some kinks, it did technically work for the duration that we've had it, but we are not going to be reinvesting in this at this time. Maybe there are other options on the market that are better than this, but I would not recommend this to other people at this point.